Let's suppose you're trying to build a city builder game, something like SimCity. Now I give you an objective, all right? I say that your task is to figure out how you'd want to place a building within the game. And I want you to ensure that when you place the building, the following must happen. The first where a game object is actually created if you're using Unity or an actor if you're using Unreal Engine. The second where you add this building into a list of buildings. So the, the building type can be anything of your description and it just goes into a list. The third is where you actually play a sound effect and a particle effect. And the fourth, let's assume that the building is a school. So you have to keep track of the education level in your city, which is just a variable and the, the value increases by one for a school placed. Now this task is going to be fairly easy for you if you have some experience with the game engine and you're building a single player game. But let's sort of analyze what changes in a multiplayer game and how we'd want to think about implementing something like this for one. Now before we attempt this problem in a multiplayer setting, there are two concepts that I want you to know. The first one is remote procedure calls. This allows for your system to have ways for actors to talk across the network. So fundamentally, you have three types of RPCs, right? The first one is client to server, where a client can send a message to a server and the server can do something. Then you have the server to client, where a server sort of sends a message to one individual client. And then you have server to all clients, which is sort of like a broadcast where a server can send a message to all clients. So essentially to simplify, an RPC is one function that is executed cross network. All right, so the second concept is called state synchronization. So essentially what this means is you are syncing state or values such as ints, bools, floats, or any other primitive data types that you can think of across a network. So essentially each client has a copy of a variable that is the same and can only be mutated on the server. So you have a value that's updated on the server and then this value change is propagated across to all the clients. So let's get back to the problem statement from the start of the video, right? You want to spawn a school building and you want to make sure that you handle the task to work precisely over a network. So let's get cracking with the solution. So the flow is something like this. When the client requests to place a school, you run an RPC from the client to server, and then you ask the server essentially to spawn the school. So the question now is what must the spawn building function on the server do when it's run? So first you want to create a game object in Unity or an actor in Unreal. So here you don't want to roll out your own solution, right? You want to use a network library abstraction, such as in mirror, you have network server.spawn. That's something you'd reach out to. Uh, this is to ensure that the object that is placed is you know, synced and placed on all clients. So for the second problem, which is adding to a global list, you want to grab a reference to the above placed building, or you want to create an abstraction for your building object. And the next thing you want to do is place this object in a list, right? So mirror has a data structure to handle exactly this case and they call it a sync list. So every time you update this list, this list is synced across every single client as well as a server when you update it on the server. So this falls under state synchronization, which is what I was talking about before. The reason you want this list to be synced across the network is so that if another client wants to do something with this information, the fact that a school is spawned somewhere and he wants the metadata of that school, it becomes super easy to access that. Of course, he can make a call to the, you know, to the server as well and request for it, but you know, these are trade-offs that you have to think about when you actually create your project. So the third problem is particle and sound effect. And here you just run a simple RPC, right? So it's from server to all the clients. And solving the last problem, which is updating the education points of the city. This again falls under state synchronization and you want to make sure that you synchronize an integer. And now all clients get a copy, but this value is mutable only on the server. So I hope you find this example useful. Let's talk about a few quick takeaways that you can take from this video. So the first takeaway is use client to server RPCs to basically run stuff on the server, synchronize state and indirectly talk to other clients when required. The second one is use server to client RPCs to have transient effects, right? Which means temporary. So these are your particles, your sounds, etc. And the last one is use state sync to have persistent and consistent state. So an example, so imagine a map is chosen for an FPS game, let's say a round of CSGO or Valorant, and let's say a client disconnects. Now when the client tries to reconnect, instead of sending the entire map data across the network to the client that's trying to reconnect, Imagine if all you had to do was ensure that you were sending a single variable such as an integer, which is already state synced across the network. All the client has to do at this point is to spawn the map based on which ID the you know map corresponds to. And that's it. So guys, for the game I shipped into production recently, these tips and you know this sort of mental model of thinking how to architect your game server um, sort of took me 90% of the way there and it helped me with almost all my use cases. If you found this helpful, please drop a like, subscribe, 
it would really help out this channel and if you like this kind of content drop a comment let me know what you'd like to see thanks and i'll see you in the next one